This is Val Pinchbeck, producer-director at WTOG CW44 in Tampa, Florida. You're watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Live from Las Vegas, this is NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Beat. Here's your host, Jeff Adams. What up, what up, what up, what up? What's going on, NAB Live? We are here. This is, uh, we're wrapping up here, actually. Uh, it's been a really fast week. We've been uh, broadcasting here all week long. In my segments, I've been talking about a lot of my passions, video streaming, and today, another one of my passions is radio streaming. Uh, but before I get that, uh, for, for those that don't know, since we're talking about radio, uh, I wanted to address this uh, probably an hour and a half ago. Uh, uh, the singer Prince passed away at the age of 57. And if you know you were you know if you were big in, a, in radio in the '80s, I mean he was everything on uh, the FM dial in the '80s, and uh, you know that's very very sad that Prince passed away. But uh, I, I thought I'd bring it up, even though it's not NAB material. But we're talking about radio, and he was a big part of radio, and uh, you know he will be truly missed. What a great artist he was. But today, uh, folks, we are talking talking internet streaming radio, and I have a good friend here. Uh, with me, Paul Camp. He is the VP of Business Development at Backbone Networks. What's going on, Paul? Not a whole lot. Actually, there is a lot way going too on. much. Way too much, right? <laughs> way too much. You've been sleeping good here with Dennis? Sleeping okay. Sleeping okay, but it's a little bit uh, different. The you, air's a little bit different here than back home. I know. It's, it's very dry. Yes, very dry. Are you, do, are you doing any late nights or anything like that? Or are you being smart? Um, generally being smart. Which, you know, you're on East Coast time, so you came here. I mean, I, I, one night I, uh, I stayed out too late, paid the price, right. came in, did my thing, and I was just dragging. And then right. I, I had the old man syndrome. I went to, uh, I went to you know, bed at 7 o'clock, yeah. and I got up at 5. And I said, oh, I can make the, uh, the Golden Corral breakfast buffet. <laughs> so I was like, I was, I was happy about that. So anyways, Paul, uh, I got to tell you about Backbone Radio. Um, it's, something, it's a product I've been using uh, in my broadcast for probably, what, it's two, two about years? Two, about give or take two years. About two years. And uh, I, I said, you know, the world needs to know more about this platform because uh, it's, it's helped me tremendously in my workflow uh, of how I do it. Because I, I, I do a video show, but I also do a radio stream as well. And this, this, uh, this is just an amazing product. Uh, Paul, let's, let's, let's get in the, the nuts and bolts of this great product. Okay, we'll, we'll, uh, so let me talk a little bit about Backbone Radio and how it operates. It, t a traditional um, radio station, you usually have uh, two studios at the radio station, one for the producer and one for the on-air talent. And in the production booth is usually a fairly expensive piece of hardware that does radio automation. Um, and uh, then you, uh, you know, where the producer loads it up with uh, all sorts of liners and clips and notes and all sorts of audio to make the station sound fresh and alive. And then in the, more on the other booth, you know, is the on-air talent, like, like you. You push the button, switching between live and automation all the time. And uh, what we do that's a little bit different is we take the automation and we put it out in the cloud. Let's, 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 let's talk, let's, let's we rewind a little bit. Let's, let's talk about how you came up with the solution. I've been asking a lot of people uh, when I interview them, Explain your history in radio and what you did before and when you guys, you know, George and all you guys came together to come okay. up with a solution of why you came up with this solution. Okay, well, a uh, couple of things. I usually start with George because of he's got the longest history in radio. Um, he grew up in radio. His dad was the uh, chief engineer for the RKO Radio Network. Real radio people know what that is. You know, he had WOR and W, uh, what was it, uh, in Boston. Um, I'm blanking, but he also, uh, before that, he started WAAF in Boston. He did WRKO in Boston, okay. which uh, he did a lot of uh, music back in the 60s. So George grew up in that environment. Um, George and I met at uh, Prime Computer, you know, because uh, I actually come from the computer industry, um, and we always uh, stayed, stayed close. And uh, he went off and started uh, doing some work with Formula One um, uh, through Rich Cherney. Okay. Um, who was running a company called Telecast Fiber Systems, which is much more on the video side right. of things. Um, uh, when they were done doing some of those efforts with, um, with Formula One, Rich said, uh, what should we do now? And George says, I want to do radio. So George built, built the product, similar to what we have today, only 
structurally different, where um, uh, the concept was to sell software. And uh, again, two client applications, one for the on-air person and the other for the producer. And, and uh, they were trying to sell it running on a piece of Linux hardware to radio stations. So the radio stations had to have a Linux engineer and they had right. to have all this. And I became involved because I was working at Sun Microsystems on uh, cloud technology and the business models around the cloud. And uh, they said, our stuff works well, but we're having trouble because people aren't technical enough to run some of the components. And I said, why don't you change it to a service and take that Linux server, put it in the cloud, run it yourself, and just charge a monthly fee. And that became the genesis of this. And oh, the early 2000s, um, they, we started investigating how to make that work. Right. Um, but we've been doing this in anger for about three or four years where um, we've taken that product and as you know, we've added additional products yeah. that augment it even, even further. One of the big challenges that um, uh, we ran into though was um, the licensing of music. So a lot of the calls that we would right, make. right, because uh, you know, uh, you know, Live three sixty five just went because right. of the, the new law. I mean. Well, the the, the change law. If you want, I can walk you through a little bit of that that background. Um, uh, so if you if you do a what they call a non interactive stream on right. the internet, like a Pandora, yeah, um, they pay a certain rate that's set by the copyright um, royalty board. Right, and um, uh, so they're paying a certain rate and. All the stations that operate in that fashion need to pay that rate. And there are different categories, like there's NPR, non-commercial stations, and there's a college section and everything. And uh, um, the royalty rates, if you look at Pandora's financials, Pandora, though they're generating revenue, is still uh, um, losing money because of how much right. they have to pay in royalties. Um, uh, so that's, that's been a challenge. And so what we've tried to do is find a way to make that work for us, so one of the calls that we would use, we typically take, similar to Live 365, was, okay, I get your radio product, it runs well and everything, but what about the licensing? And our terms of service is, was the opposite of Live 365. We always felt that you're a broadcaster, act like one, clear right. your rights, that's not our job. Right. Now, what is our job is, is we can help um, we can help with the reporting. Well, let's let's get into it. Let's let's look at the screenshot here. Now you take your iPhone, you take your iPhone, your yep. any phone, and you can plug in. You know, so if you know you had a guy on a sports field, you can basically use your LTE. You yep. know, your Correct. and he could plug in a uh, uh, an additional microphone into his right. his and phone and just broadcast straight from the football game or exactly. whatever he might be doing, the red e carpet events or whatever. E exactly, or an iPad. Some some a couple of people are starting to look at using the iPads for that. And, and the benefit for that of that is you can be back in the studio, he can be out remote, and you're high fidelity audio point to point. It's like uh, watching ESPN and you got studio to studio quality audio versus right. the, the, the dialing where you hear the squishiness, you know, where they're squishing down the sound into the eight kilohertz range. And that's, ph that's phenomenal. I mean, because it's, it's literally, uh, you know, because, you know, back in the day when you started doing, you know, uh, radio and stream, you had to take all this stuff with you right. and set it up. And now, literally, you could have your reporter there. He can bring his little mic and his little thing, right. plug in his right. phone and go, you're going to go live on air. And literally, you go live on air and you give the broadcast. You don't have to worry about anything. Absolutely. The broadcaster can be a broadcaster. He doesn't have to worry about exactly. being producing and doing all that great stuff. So that's fantastic. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it's um, uh, it's what the some of the podcasters are interested in because they want that studio quality point to point such that they don't have to all go to the studio all the time. It right. really kind of um, uh, reinforces our tagline, our message, which is your station anywhere. You, know, you can set up production really easily because you know, we do it through the cloud. Yeah, and I was talking, this is a great solution too. I was talking to a CEO of a radio station in North Carolina uh, two weeks ago and the, the biggest thing is like they're trying to uh, you know, sell the time. But the biggest yep. problem they're running into is, you know, it's that mentality you have to come into the radio studio to make right. it work. Right. So, you know, I kind of shared him with this uh, this platform. He's like, really, you can you, you can do this? Yeah. So literally this opens up if you're, you know, if you're selling time on radio and you get a talk format, uh, especially on the weekends, like a lot of, yes. you know, like Cox and Clear Channel, they still sell time on the weekends to specialty shows locally. Yes. 
So, I mean, this is a great solution for filling that. You could have a guy in San Francisco, you could be in the Orlando market uh, and do your right. show and, right. and uh, fantastic. They don't need to come in the studio. Yep. All right there. And you have the producer producing the show, right. you know, right from the, either the studio or they could just say, I don't want to go in the studio right. this morning. I'm going to stay in my underwear at the house right. and uh, I'm going to produce the show because I don't feel like going in. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> well, in, in fact, um, uh, uh, back to who we're trying to appeal to, we're trying to appeal to a lot of the freelance producers that might want to, uh, you know, uh, do some um, one-off uh, production of radio shows. They make they can do three, four, five of them remotely. That's, that's they don't, don't have to be, you know, local, you know, and just limited to their, you know, physical location. Um, it makes it very easy, even in a, a, a close-in physical location like we're from the Boston area. You know, those radio stations are actually scattered. If they need to move from one radio station to another. That's a commute time. Well, it's, it's, it's great, too, because you've challenged. I mean, this is great for podcasters, too. But see, yes. people used to always make, you know, I guess my show became a podcast after I did it live. Yeah. But I don't go back and edit anything. So right. what's, what's, it stays, it stays. But th this is really challenging for podcasters because, you know, Howard Stern said a couple months ago, you know, he was making fun of podcasters. Right. He says, if you want to learn broadcasting, you go to a radio station, you learn it. But this gives people the ability right. to... Uh, well, I'm gonna go fix that in post. I'm gonna go yeah. edit that. This gives you the ability to be in a live environment right. and really practice your craft. Even if you're starting up, and this is great for college education. Right. This is great for the even to the the pro level. Right. Uh, this is, I mean, this is a truly amazing product. And the reason I say that, I, I have it in my hands. I use it when I do my my broadcasting, and I've used the phone systems. It's worked flawlessly. Right. And I've had no hiccups. I haven't had a chance to use a Lucy. I was yet. gonna say we got to get you the co-host. Right. We'll do right. that after the show. Okay. Right? Um, as, uh, as you get uh, uh, ramped up on more of the high fidelity audio, um, you know, it'll make it easier for you to bring in guests. And let's, let's get into that too. They say, well, wh where can I send these feeds? Uh, you know, with you guys, you guys created a tune in channel for me. Yep. And then in the cloud, so uh, I think I got two minutes, so I'll explain it the best way I can as a broadcaster. Right. So, so in the cloud, basically, uh, when, you, when you're not live, you know, normally you used to have to run a computer to keep reruns going. Correct. So now, literally, you can just program in your playlist in the cloud. Everything's in an EP, uh, MP3 format in the cloud, and your station is cloud in the cloud 24/7, going the way you program it. So you can run commercials. You have to have a computer running. It's like that's it's right. fantastic. All right. Well, that's that's the real benefit of moving the automation to the cloud. When you're not broadcasting live, you no longer need your internet connection. You can shut down your Macintosh because you're your automation's running up in the cloud. In fact, we become like the IT shop. We, we become your IT shop for your radio station. Yeah. Right? So we're monitoring that stream 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. If anything happens, we usually you know, get, a, get a text saying, hey, you're getting chattiness on your disk drive. Well, yeah, that's for us to handle. We don't want the, the producers to have to worry about that stuff. Right. And having to buy bandwidth, all our stuff is, is Prepackaged in a in a simple fashion, and that, at least that's the objective. Well, once again, uh, Paul, uh, website. Uh, two ways to get to us. The easiest way is backbone.com, um, and uh, uh, on our website you'll see all of our products. We have a, a product drop-down section, and um, uh, I guess I'd like to mention if you really love it um, and you'd like to try it out, uh, we have 30-day free demos of most of our uh, products and, and technologies. Um, you know, click the button, fill in the form, and, and uh, uh, we'll get you going. Awesome. Well, Paul, thanks for your time today stopping by here at NAB Live. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back after this. Howdy, I'm Jack Harris, a quasi-journalist with News Radio 970 WFLA, Tampa Bay. You're watching NAB Show Live. <laughs> Las Vegas. This is NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Beat. Here's your host, Jeff Adams. Hola, hola, hola. What's up? What's up, NAB? <laughs> How's it going? We are talking uh, radio. And uh, what was that song? Radio killed. No, what was it? V video. What was it? Radio killed. The, what was that? How'd that song go? You got. You should be on the air right now. I'm getting. I'm doing hacks. I can't even repeat lyrics on songs. <laughs> Um, so we're talking radio today, and uh, it's you know one of the, one of the highlights I do I do you know I do an online show that's video and radio feed, 
So both of these worlds kind of mash together for me. So uh, today we have uh, Kirk Harnack from Telus Alliance. Howdy, hello, good we, to be here. This guy's a, a, a living legend uh, <laughs> in, in this radio world. I mean, everybody in radio gravitates to uh, Kirk. Yeah, being a living legend is better than the alternative, so I'll take that. But you know, I also, he also does uh, some part-time anchoring uh, in Nashville yeah. for, as, a, as a weatherman, Weather, correct? Yeah, yeah, lows, highs. Yeah, so, so, so Kirk has the experience. I mean, uh, something that helped me when I was preparing to come out here, I'd see on the Facebook feed, you gave the weather report uh, on Facebook. Yeah, that was fun. People want to know, how do I dress for NAB? We've had monsoons here, and we've had hot weather and chilly weather too. So I try to get people prepared, especially when they're coming from Singapore or you know, Istanbul. I want to help them get pack the right stuff. So I, I don't know if you looked at the weather. I mean, this is totally off topic, but I had a flight at 4 o'clock, and I, I looked at it. I was checking in my Southwest flight yeah. the, this morning, yeah. and uh, it, my flight was already delayed. It, it's delayed to like 6, because I was already going to land at like at 12.30 at 9. Now it says I'm going to land at like 1.45, too. So what, is there anything you, going on? You and me both, I get into Nashville at uh, 1 a.m. if it's not delayed. Did you look? I didn't look at that yet. I checked in, but I didn't look. I was seeing if there was any kind of storm front coming. You could, yeah. you could give me a heads up on it. A little bit of rain in that part in, in the around East Mississippi River, but you're down in Florida. Yeah. Well, you have little showers every day. Yeah, pretty much. But nothing too severe usually. No, no. Well, it, it depends. A little lightning when, here and there. What's a little lightning among If you don't live there, you might think it's severe, but <laughs> right, you get right. used to it after exactly. a while. Exactly. So uh, you're, you're with Telos Alliance. How long, how long have you been with Telos Alliance? Well, 15 years. Wow. Yeah, I've had eight different titles there, so I'm not sure just what they're if they can either they, what's Kirk good at we got to find something that he's good at or <laughs> or there's a hole that needs to be filled let's put Kirk on it for a while right yeah but I mean you I mean you're, you're phenomenal I mean I, I you look at Telus Alliance you know uh, you know on the internet I mean visually I mean you're everywhere with the Telus Alliance brand yeah. which is fantastic you're yeah. great you're great for that position of being a like the brand ambassador of Telus Alliance it's good to talk to engineers and and have them tell us uh, what's working, what's not working, how they're getting stuff done. Because in the end, that's what that's what station engineers care about is how do I accomplish this with a minimum amount of trouble and so it's going to sit there and work and my manager's going to be happy and my program is going to be happy and my phone won't ring at 2 a.m. So that's what we try to impart to them so they can do their jobs better. And hey, I'm an engineer too. I'm part owner of uh, eight radio stations, so I want my stuff to work well. I did not know that. Yeah, I own the part that doesn't make any money. So I don't talk about it a whole lot. <laughs> but yeah, we have uh, six stations in Mississippi and two stations in... Wait, wait, wait. Is that the one... This guy put a video. He was climbing up an engine, yeah. Uh, yeah. a tower, tower yeah. with a GoPro cam. And yep. I, I could never do that. I, I mean, I was hey, like, these engineers... Sure you could. Sure you could. You know, I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm, all, I'm six foot five. I'm scared of heights. You know, I look down at the ground. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to fall. <laughs> I could not do that. I mean, how, how did you have the components well, I, I have to the, do I had the safety gear on. I didn't used to use but, the safety gear, but now it's required, so... And I had some Facebook shaming. I put a video up there. I wasn't wearing quite the right harness. Oh, the shaming started from all the tower guys. So I had to buy the right harness, and now I'm all legal. Guys up here on this, yeah. you know, tower so high up yeah. doing Facebook Live. Well, I'm up on a tower right now, and uh, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, wow. So that, that, that's impressive. I mean, so you, you own, you're, you're part owner of some stations, eight stations. Yeah. And so uh, let's get into a little bit of what uh, Telus Alliance is for those who don't know. Uh, what you guys do for uh, radio stations. So the short elevator speeches, you know, Telos started uh, about 35 years ago when Steve Church, the founder of the company, figured out, yeah, he invented a better mousetrap. He figured out how to put telephone callers on the air so that they would sound as good as possible. No more sticking a microphone in front of a speakerphone and calling that your telephone interface. So he was, the, it was the, Steve invented the first, uh, the first audio uh, radio station product that used DSP, okay. digital signal processing, to make the caller sound clear. And then over the years, uh, several breakthroughs, Telos was the very first licensee of MP3 in the world. Wow. The very first one. I did not know that. Yeah, wow. and if, if Steve had had a big pocket full of cash, we could have had exclusive rights to it. Really? But we didn't have a big pocket full of cash. So Steve and Fraunhofer worked out an MP3 license, and that went into the original Zephyr. Now that, the Zephyr made possible doing a live remote uh, of the Boston Philharmonic from Tanglewood, okay, way out in the sticks. They could do that live and not have to rent satellite time. Wow. Right? So radio stations in Boston could go do St. Patrick's Day broadcasts from, du from Dublin and not have satellite costs. They just make two long distance phone calls and they have a beautiful digital clear signal. So that's what MP3 and, and the Zephyr did for people. And then the next breakthrough is in audio processing. We have the Omnia brand, and the next breakthrough has been in audio over IP for studios. So I helped introduce that. I mean, I went around and told engineers about 
Livewire, AOIP, low latency, microphone to earphone, works great, no latency there. And uh, you know, 11, 12 years ago, a lot of engineers said that that won't work, that can't work. And now you go in the television or the radio hall and everybody is IP. Video over IP, audio over IP, everything's IP now. And I'm, and I'm really glad to say that Telos has a couple of patents on, on how we do it at, at Telos. Then everybody got together and said, let's make it all work together. And so Telos was a founding member of the AES, of what became AES 67. Right. So we're really all about helping engineers, even if it means helping our competitors. Right. We want to help engineers get the job done. What Telos has done, and this is really not a commercial for Telos, but I'm going to show you, take you through some process. They just showed it. Uh, we had a video rolling. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't watching the, the, the right monitor. Uh, so um, uh, we include an audio processor that's intended for streaming with every encoder. So you feed audio in, you, you process the audio with the included uh, processor, mm -hmm. and then it goes to be encoded MP3 or AAC or whatever the flavor of the year is going to be coming up, and then you stream that out to Shoutcast servers, Icecast servers, Wowza, whatever you need to. We can send that out in lots of different ways. Wow. Now, that's kind of where we are now. People are getting used to the idea of maybe some quality streaming going on, right? And here's the rub, though. Here's the problem. You may have been to station websites where they have, click here for our high-speed, high-quality stream. Click here if you're bandwidth impaired. You know, it's the low-quality stream. We're making the listener choose this. Does my mom know which one to choose? Exactly. No, she doesn't. Um, my wife is fairly technically savvy. I'm not sure she'd know which one to choose. Right. So making, and, and the reason we do that is because, you know, if you're on mobile and you have a, a, maybe a poor data connection, you, you can't listen to the high-speed stream. You've got to pick a slower one. Right. right. And people don't understand this difference. So a lot of stations are doing this. Some even have, click here for our Windows media stream. Click here for our real audio stream. Let's hope they're not still doing that. Click here for our MP3. Click here for our AAs. Whoa, whoa, so what is this? Yeah, we've got to make it simple for people. When you go to Netflix, do you have to choose which brand of codec you're going to watch it with? Right, right. No, you just you click the movie and it, right. it plays. That's what we need to get to, okay? That's what we've got to get to. Um, I don't know if the control room can show the, the first video again of the, of yeah. the process. Did you guys that roll that first video again? That'd be really cool if they could show that again because the, the, that, that process is still important. It's absolutely critical that audio get processed. Here yeah, here we go. That audio get processed with an audio processor that's intended for streaming. Yeah, uh, you, you shouldn't use an FM processor. You shouldn't use an AM processor. Well, let's, let's stop there with the, uh, you know, the, Explain that difference. Good. You know, you wouldn't use your AM processor on an FM transmitter. Right. Because, well, first of all, it's probably mono. But second of all, it doesn't have the right preemphasis. It doesn't have the right shape for the, for the transmission. Okay? Um, you wouldn't put diesel fuel into a car meant for gas. Right. Same thing. Here we go. Uh, I should go over this. There's the audio processor shown. Output of it goes to a couple of encoders like MP3 or AAC. And most of these... Um, uh, encoder systems include a local uh, confidence monitor, so I kind of show that with the ears and the, the little shoutcast thing. So you sh the engineer should be able to listen locally, make sure his uh, encoders are working. And from there, you can send a stream out, and you send one stream out to your shoutcast provider, or Icecast, or Wowza, or any CDN, Content Distribution Network. You want to hire a CDN, you can hire a CDN anywhere from literally $10 a month up to several hundred dollars a month uh, or more. And a lot, of, a lot of radio stations, the size of my stations, you can easily hire a CDN to distribute your programming for you for $50 to $100 a month that, uh, per station. And that'll get you a reasonable number of listeners at a reasonable bit rate. And hey, maybe they'll even throw in an app you know, for your iPhone or for your Android. So back to the processing. Uh, you wouldn't put diesel fuel in your gas car or vice versa. The, the mechanism of an AM transmitter, what it does with the audio to put it on the air, is quite different from an FM processor, right. which, is, which are both really different than MP3 or AAC. Those are what we call psychoacoustic encoders. They find the audio that they believe your ear can't hear or not, won't miss very much and take that away and then okay. encode the rest. And that's a really different process than AM or FM. 
And in fact, it's a changing process. Moment by moment, the behavior of an encoder, whether it's MP3 or AAC or something else, that behavior actually changes. And the audio processing you want to change along with it, or at least anticipate what it's going to do. So I'll have some advice about if you don't have one of our processors, which are intended for coding, if you've got a Brand X processor or something else, I'll give you some advice about how to make that work as well as possible. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, we, we, right now where we are, we've got, you know, you might put out one bit rate or two or three. Right. Okay, fine. You might get listed with TuneIn or iTunes Radio or uh, some of the other listing services. Um, so you show up in the in the uh, directory of a Grace Digital Radio or a, a C Crane Radio or something like that. Um, here's the goal, though. We want, we want it to be so easy that a, a listener just opens their phone and clicks a link, and it doesn't matter the bit rate. Right. The player and the server figure that out together. Yeah, that's, that's, it should where, be. that's where we want to get to. And so if you're in a bandwidth limited area, you get a stream that you know, doesn't sound as good, but you got it automatically. Right. Let's say you're driving down the road, and you're in a, there's cell phone towers everywhere. And you've got a, uh, an, on, on your digital dashboard, you're listening to uh, your favorite radio station, crystal clear, high bit rate. You drive into a tunnel. Remember the jokes we used to make about AM guys? Hey, he disappears every time he goes into a tunnel, right? <laughs> uh, same thing with your data, right? So your data might get pretty crummy through the tunnel or through an area of town that has fewer cell towers. So we want to be able to switch automatically to a lower bit rate. The quality goes down, but we still got the audio. And then when, the, when your data rate comes back up, then the quality will come back up. That's what we want. Well, Apple has a solution to this. So does Microsoft. And there is a consortium solution as well. And okay. that's where we're headed. And that's what the rest of we'll talk about here. Yeah, yeah let's, let's get into the, uh, we've got about adaptive. eight minutes. Yeah. Let's get into the adaptive multi-rate streaming. Hey, and adaptive. Let's explain that. Adaptive is such a great word because it adapts to your conditions. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, I'm a Netflix subscriber and I got kids. You may be in the same boat, right? Right. Got right. kids? Yes, Netflix. got kids. Got three of them. Have you ever noticed, my kid likes to watch cartoons. I start the, now he can do the remote control now himself, but before he couldn't. So I start the cartoon and for the first 10 seconds on the big screen TV, the cartoon's a little fuzzy. It started fast, but it's a little fuzzy. Ten seconds later, we got a high bandwidth connection. It's crystal clear sharp. Right. What is that? That's adaptive. That's adaptive multi-rate video streaming. Netflix, I think, kind of rolled their own with a little bit of standards built in. Let's do the same thing for audio streaming. So when you first start your player, bam. You don't have to wait for buffer, 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 right? You've seen that on your app. On right. your phone, buffer, 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 and you're waiting and you're waiting. Let's get that stream start quickly with a low bit rate stream, and then the player figures out, hey, I can do it, I can I got lots of bandwidth. Do you have anything higher? Do you have anything in a size 10? You know, so uh, and, and the server says, well, yes, I have a much faster bit rate uh, stream. It's much higher quality. Would you like that? And the player says, absolutely, I'd like that. So start sending that one. Now, how does that work? Do we, uh, I'm not sure if we have the second graphic or not. Yeah, we got, can we play the second graphic real quick? Okay, so what happens is at the radio station, we're encoding your audio in typically three different bit rates. You can do more, but three is typical. There we go, audio processing, maybe a 256 kilobit encoder, a 96 kilobit encoder, and a 48 kilobit per encoder. You could go on down from there. You could have a 16 kilobit encoder if you want something really low bandwidth. So we encode your audio in three different bit rates. Now, what comes out of those is not the audio streams. It's, it's like a raw version of that. It's the raw frame data, we call it. So let's look at the, at the, at the next video, if we can do that. We right. take these three different raw streams, again, not fit for internet distribution yet. And we're gonna take those three and we're gonna, whenever, we're gonna package those. I think the next video shows that. We're gonna take the high bit rate stream and we're gonna fill up a file, five seconds worth. That's adjustable, but yeah. five seems to work. Five seconds worth of data into a file. We close the file, and that file goes to a server. The medium bit rate stream, there it is. The medium bit rate stream, we fill up a file with five seconds worth. It's a smaller file, right. and we send that to the server. And the low bit rate stream, we fill that up with five seconds worth of audio data. We close the file, and we send that to the server. The key here is each of those files, well, they're different sizes, but they each have exactly the same audio in them precisely to the microsecond, the same audio. So you right. can switch between them and never hear a glitch, ever. 
So those files, every five seconds, are sent up to a file server. Now here's the cool thing, if you're into streaming and file servers, you know, with traditional streaming, Shoutcast, Icecast, other stuff, your, your player that's on your phone or your computer has a constant relationship with that, with that streaming computer. They're shaking hands all the time. Right, right, right. With a file server, this is file-based. There's no funky ports. There's no port strange 8000 or 8888 or port 8080 or anything weird. It's port 80. It's, it's like grabbing a web page. The hotel's not going to stop you from getting the streaming. Your office is not going to stop you from getting the streaming. It looks like a web page right. to the routers and to the IT security guys. Okay. So your, your, your phone, your app says, oh, Kirk wants to listen to this stream. There are three different bit. I'll go find out. Oh, there's three bit rates available. Hmm, I think I can do this bit rate. And so the player is actually smart. The player with adaptive multi-rate streaming decides which stream it's going to pick based on what it thinks it can do and a little bit of history. So let's say it's going to pick the, 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 the low bit rate stream. It's a five second file. If it downloads that file in 0 .038 seconds, well, guess what? We can probably got room to go to a bigger file. Right, right, right. So it says, let's try the next file, or even let's go for the top file. And all the time it's doing is downloading the file full of audio data, it's playing that out, and it's analyzing, do I have enough bandwidth to download the next file, or should I go for a smaller bit rate? And that is the complete story from end to end. Well, we got about like five minutes. Let's, let's talk about a solution for you know, uh, a lot of stations, we talked about it, some solutions that you guys might have. You know, obviously, you know, I did a lot of video and radio stuff simultaneously. What would, what would be a great uh, audio processor to use both and both feeds, the video and what's going out on the radio stream? That, that's a good question, because now it, see, it used to be that video went out on a television transmitter and it was basically uh, an FM transmitter uh, for the audio. Well, nowadays, television audio is also bitrate reduced just like streaming. So guess what? The same audio processor that's intended for streaming, uh, it's aware that, hey, the next thing, the thing I'm feeding is going to take this audio and get rid of a whole lot of the data. Right. That same, those same algorithms are perfect for television, streaming video, and streaming audio. So actually the same processor can, can handle both. I told you I was going to give you some advice. If you don't have, say, one of our processors, let's say you've got some cast-off multiband or some cast-off processor. Okay. Here's what you don't want to do. If you've got a low bit rate stream that you're feeding, those don't handle high frequencies elegantly. High frequencies take a lot more oomph to code and send along. So we want to actually roll off the highs. Let's say you're, you, you have a low bit rate stream on your radio station and you're transmitting either music or sports or whatever. You can, don't push the highs up. You want to roll them. Make it easy for the low bit rate encoder. If you've got a high bit rate encoder, sure, let, let that happen. Also, don't be dense. In other words, don't, don't make it sound like this. Don't crank the, the processing up right. so it's all, all compressed and processed. No, we want to make it sound natural and open because that's what the psychoacoustic encoder deals best with, best with. An AM transmitter, an FM transmitter, they don't care. If you're really high and dense all the time, they, they just don't care. But the psychoacoustic encoder, MP3, AAC, they care. Right. You're going to sound much better if it sounds more natural. Now you can still do some processing to take care of the too loud stuff and lift up the too quiet stuff. You can take care of that, but don't just make it sound like hammered doo-doo. And what's the, what, uh, one of the solutions you have is what, it, what is the, the uh, Omnia processor? Is we, that we, we absolutely, we have Omnia processors that actually can do all this. They put out an FM signal, they can put out a, an audio that is appropriate for streaming. In fact, some of our on Omnia 9 and Omnia 7 processors have stream encoders built in. There are some stations that just use their Omnia processor for air, for HD1, for HD2, for their stream. You can do all that in, say, the Omnia 9 processor. Other people, you know, mix and match processors. But again, that advice, don't use a, a processor that's cl clipping. That's the big thing. AM and FM, we can do a lot of just buzzsaw clipping of the audio, right. and for, for streaming, you can't do that. And for TV, same thing. Nowadays, you can't do that. You want, you want this audio to be cleaner. Um, if I put in a quick pitch for the Tello stuff, our streaming stuff, the brand name is Zipstream. Zipstream. Tello's That's Zipstream. Yes. And people say, is it better to stream with a hardware device or a software device? And our answer is, yes, of course. So Telos offers two different hardware streaming devices. One of them handles one audio input, it'll put out two streams, whatever you like, bitrate and so forth. 
the other one, brand new one, uh, will take up to eight audio program inputs, eight, eight radio stations, eight, eight things coming in, and it will produce literally dozens of different types of streams. That's, in this day where things are still kind of fragmented, you probably ought to put out an MP3 stream, right. an AAC stream of a couple different bit rates, and then you want to start doing or considering doing Apple HLS or Microsoft or the forthcoming MPEG Dash so that you're going to have mul the multi-rate streaming out there. And so with those products, uh, excuse me, with, the, with the, uh, the bigger one I mentioned, the Zipstream R2, that'll take eight in, stream a bunch of stuff out. You're, you're kind of future-proofed, if I can use that awful word. There's a new codec on the market from Fraunhofer. It's yeah. called XHEAAC. It actually sounds pretty listenable, reasonably enjoyable, down to about 16 kilobits. It's optimized for both voice and music, and that's kind of a tough thing. Right, right. So uh, in these days when, when uh, we, we haven't reached it yet, when, when they're selling 180,000 cars a year with digital dashboards, cell towers are going to start to get more saturated. Now, I know they're bringing out 5G and all that stuff coming up, but we're going to need the option of people listening to low bit rates and high bit rates. So as a station, you've got to offer all these outputs, all these formats, and all these bit rates to make sure you don't miss anybody. Well, Kirk, uh, I could be talking about this stuff all day because I'm a geek <laughs> like that. Yeah. And most people are like, what are you, what are you? Yeah, but you have to appreciate radio uh, and audio to really get what you're saying. And I, 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 we're out of time, you know, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, um, thank if, if I could mention, yeah. uh, folks that are interested in this, we do have some videos on the, on uh, YouTube, look for Telos Alliance. Yes. Telos, we have a channel on there. You'll find tons of videos on all our products and you can really get some education there. That's awesome. Yep. Well, we're here thanks. with uh, Kirk. Uh, thanks for stopping by Thank Telos you. Alliance. And uh, man, I, uh, he dropped some knowledge on me today. I, I got an education. So we'll be right back after this NAB Live.